What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stanbeck back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. And as usual, I'm here with my big dog, Nate Dog, over here, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nate Newton. Wow. Yeah, how you doing today, man? You know, I... I'm, I like I like I, I went to the doctor yesterday. I'm 301, and okay. I was I'm trying to get on on about two two ninety. Okay, you know, and uh, well, I got to still be big. You still big Nate dog? No, no. Until you get to two ninety nine, and right. when you get to two ninety nine, I'll call you something different. Okay. But until then, you big Nate dog. Okay, all right, okay. All right. But uh, but today, y'all, we we have a special guest today. One of one of Nate Dog's old teammates, one of the the Dallas Cowboys legends, two time Super Bowl champion, right? Don't let me yeah. mess that up. Two time yeah. Super Bowl yeah. champion, two of them things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kenny Gann, how you doing, brother? Man, I'm doing great. Stand back, man. It's it's a blessing to be here with you and Nate. Um, I'm loving life and um, just relaxing, man. Okay, okay, well, Kenny. You know yeah. we we always start this show off. I know you may or may not be familiar, but we got to talk about them boys. Yeah, we always yeah. got to talk about them boys. We'll get into other topics, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes right. it's humor, sometimes it's serious. But we always got to let the State of the Union address of the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Were you convinced that this team is dominant against a, a non-dominant Detroit Lions? Were you convinced in that win? Was that, was that good enough for you? Uh, that convinced – we're talking to Kenny or to Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to Kenny first. I Kenny, know you're going to home it for me. You know what I'm saying? They I'm going to go to Kenny first. I need to know if Kenny going to keep it 100 with me. Right. Yeah. I was, I wasn't surprised. Put it that way. Ooh. Because I think um, I've seen Dan Campbell have that team ready to play some teams, and um, he does a good job with what he's got. And um, so I knew it wasn't going to be a pushover, but they did what they had to do to win. And uh, with that, Dak a little rusty. Um, I think we did enough at the end. I hope they just start off games like they finished. Okay. All right. All right. Nate Dog. Yes, sir. He said it all. I mean, it's, it, it, he, was, he was babbling and talking to them, but at the end, <laughs> how they finished it, yes, sir. That's how we're okay. going to start right. from now on. Let, let, me, let me go ahead and rewind it for y'all, yeah. since, since y'all going to still be homers about it. You know what I mean? I understand y'all got a couple of rings with the boys. Right. I get it, man. Right, right, Listen up. Right. Um, if Detroit in their tight end on that screenplay would have extended the ball like any other human being on this earth would have in right. that situation and scored that touchdown, uh -huh. there would have been no fumble. Right. Had... The three defensive backs for Detroit Lions, one of them would have right. intercepted the ball that Dak right. threw up right. there for for for, right. for whatever. I don't know. It was a jump ball. If one of them would have came down with the interception, does Detroit get in a situation in the fourth quarter where they have to throw the ball, yes, or sir. do they continue to beat the turf and run through this Dallas defense? Okay, let me and let me say this: Do you hear any glass breaking, Kenny? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't hear any glass breaking because mm. my grandmama and a lot of the old folks told me. That if a frog had a glass, <laughs> you know, a, yeah. you know, every time you hop, it would break. Mm -hmm. And them ifs don't work unless it's it, huh? yeah, unless, <laughs> <laughs> unless they become actual reality. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. So the reality the, of it is, is they got the W. Yes, sir. They got the okay, Mr. Kenny. <laughs> being that you're being that you're a, a Mr. Mr. Dallas Cowboy, being that you're a safety on the defense side of the ball, we're right. over. We're offensive players over here, okay? Right. You know, I, I try to keep it 100 with Nate, but Nate don't be jumping on board <laughs> with me sometimes. Kid. So, as a defensive player, were you satisfied with Dallas's rush defense against the D, against the Detroit Lions and the Philadelphia Eagles? I can keep I, it real no. there too. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's <laughs> they, they have to step it up. Um, um, because when it gets down to, you know, week 13, 14, you know, we may have some injuries. I don't like to play nobody with injuries, but man, we got to have some guys that's coming off that bench. We had starters, um, uh, sitting on the bench, mm -hmm. just ready to come in. So some guys got to step up, man. And, um, uh, and, and when you miss some pieces, man, I think it was too many big plays. We got to stop the run and, um, and we gonna have some backs. We got Saquon coming back, and we, mm. we, we how, got some. Backs. How, how do you how do you stop the run against some of these prolific rushing offenses? You know, because you talk about what's come what was what's coming in here this week. Okay, who, who we got coming in here this week, Nate Dog? Yeah, yeah, we got the, we got the Bears now, and not, not only they got two nice running backs, they got a quarterback that can like they can run it too. Deeny. So they just ran for yeah. two hundred forty yards. I yeah. don't know if y'all know mm. that they just ran for yeah. two forty. In Dallas Cowboys, apparently they feel what I've been saying this whole time. You need a two gap 
Big dog, Hold big on, dog. That's me. Nah, Come on. Nate, nah. I, we both been saying it. I'm saying okay, it. Yeah, we both, no, been, we both been saying it. We that. both been saying how See, they need a big nasty. You got that supersonic hat on and you lost. <laughs> You're in hey, the wrong I'm state. Bright. I'm bright over here. You yeah. understand <laughs> me? Listen, they, they've been needing, they've been in need of a true two gap, big yes. nasty up front that doesn't get moved and doesn't jump around blocks. Would you That's agree right. with that, Mr. Gant? Yes, sir. Okay, and what did they go out there and do? Uh, this is this is Wednesday that we're filming it, right? Well, right. It airs, I think, Thursday or Friday. But as of yesterday, okay, what did the Dallas Cowboys do, Nate? They went out and got a greasy. I love they that. Greasy. Yes. 6'3", 340-pound grown man. Yes. By the name of Jonathan Hankins. Mm. Yes. You know, now, me and you, two, we do other podcasts and other shows, yeah. and me and him separately been for the last two or three years. Yeah. Every every time, Kenny, we get into the playoffs, me and him say the same thing. <laughs> All they're going to do is run the ball. Yes, sir. Game over. Because now y'all can't dictate who y'all want to put in and when y'all want to put them in. As is, is I'm saying that right, Kenny, from a defensive standpoint, y'all like absolutely. to dictate how this thing go by keeping the team one-dimensional? Yes, you're absolutely right, Nate. Um, and we we going to take away what you think you do best, Um and, and and we had a, a game plan just for what you do best. And, man, we, we was going to um, settle up on the other end. We right, just, right. We, yeah. <laughs> we going to take away what you do best. And, right. and run is what Chicago do best, and we take them away uh, early. Uh, this game will be over early. I agree. The Chicago Bears and Mr. Justin Fields are the worst team in the NFL in terms of passing yards. Yes. I'm about 100 and – Hundred and some uh, yards a game. Hundred and twenty six yards. A hundred and twenty six yards a game, Kenny. You can get that on two plays. <laughs> <laughs> you can. You can. But uh he had a better game yes, uh, against these against these Patriots. But back to Jonathan Hankin. Mm. Isaiah, me and you both. Yeah, we've been we've been asking for we've it. We've been and I ever, hope, since, ever since the arrival of Poe. Yeah, yeah, Don Terry Poe. <laughs> I used to con- call him Don Terry because he reminded me of a big old donut just rolling around <laughs> wherever they pushed him. But I- I'm hoping this guy got some fire okay. and some desire because when he was with the Giants, it was hard for the Dallas yeah. Cowboys to move him. And uh, yeah. he knows his role. Yep. He's a first and second down player. What you going to play 25 plays a game? Am I, I, how does that it. normally go? That's about it? Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's about it. What do you expect out of him, uh, Kenny? Man, just get off the ball fast and block it up. The <laughs> because you got to make them one-dimensional. They, you know, yeah. just like you said, they they only one-dimensional now with 126 yards. Yes, sir. Yeah. But as 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 a as a former safety and multi Super Bowl Super Bowl champion, what knowing that this guy's coming into the locker room, when you have a conversation with him, what are you having? What's your expectation for him and his role on this team? What do you tell him face to face, man to man, as he's coming into your locker room into your defense? What's that, What's your expectation for him? Stay in your lane. Okay, <laughs> that's right. That's right. You here for a reason? Wherever they tell you to go. Just stay there. Everybody else can have <laughs> Just take him some space, huh? Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to walk up to him, man. We had this place called Capel Deli. Okay. I'm going to bring him a Newton special. Yeah, Newton it's ultimate. still there. Yeah, I'm going to bring him a Newton ultimate. Okay. Every, every meat conceivable to man is yeah. breakfast. You don't want him to be able to move yeah. more uh, than three uh, yards. Three yards. That's one it. way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> back with, back <laughs> forwards I, and side to side, but never backwards. Nate, I, t- go ahead. What you got, kid? I still go over there at COJ. I still I pick it up for you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Now, Nate, as an offensive lineman, tell the people how hard is it to move a, a man of his size? It's hard. I mean, because you can't hit him ever uh, half man. Mm. Like a lot of guys, as a guard, I want to block you half man. Yeah, yeah. Because I can always turn back on you and flatten you. Okay. But I want to make you try to reach me. But if you try to go half man with this dude, he'll just turn you. Yeah. And he'll put you in the hole while he's standing there and get it back. No other option. Yeah. So you're going to have to hit him two gap. Two hands. You're going to have to hit him hip to hip. Combo. Well, yeah. And you're going to have to stay with him. Do not come off of him because yeah. you ain't going to move him. So stay on him and make the linebacker come to you. Okay. And then so, you deal so with So Osa Digizua. Yes. Neville Gallimore. Yes. Chauncey Golston. Man, yeah, all don't these, forget Big Bohanna, Big Quinn Bohanna. Yeah, all these boys are about to eat because about, of, because yeah. of, because of this addition right here. Yes, he he should come in and and 
uh, what a lot of these guys forget, your first responsibility is figuring out how to tie up blocks. Yep. Osa is the only true three penetrator. You talked about that a lot of times. Yep. He is the penetrator. Him and Hill, Tristan Yeah. Hill. The other guys eat up the blocks. Mm. Take that center to the point where he can't block you, and now you it, it forces the guard to come help you. Yeah. But they don't do that. They always – Yeah, yeah. They jump uh, around. Because you mentioned Philadelphia, and you mentioned uh, the, the, the Detroit Lions. Yeah. They did that. Yeah. They single handedly the blueprints locked our guys one on one, Kenny. That can't happen. You know that, Ken, Kenny. As a as a former safety and J. Ron Curse being being a very popular safety here in Dallas Cowboys Nation, right? Everybody yeah. likes him being that right. in the box safety, being able to come downhill and stick on tight ends or be downhill and play as that extra man in the box. How important is it as a safety to have somebody in the middle, especially on running downs, that can consume blocks like him? Oh, it's it's it's. It's it's very um, valuable because you know I played beside Woodson, yeah. and um, um, uh, I don't, a lot of you guys don't. I know Nate do. Um, oh, all Britain, those are some big safeties, man. Right. They come down, right. put their head on you, man. You know, and um, and, and let me go back to when I just say I wasn't just saying about Hankins doing his job. I was like one of the first, what you call the hybrid linebacker, that nickelback. Yes. And so we had to run. I had to learn the, the linebacker position, mm. taking on guards and all this stuff and mm -hmm. pulling tackles. You don't, want, you don't want them guys getting up to you. <laughs> so <laughs> all I wanted Russell them to do is get, you do your job. And, <laughs> but you, come out to me, I'll do mine. <laughs> so, all right. You, you know what? That's going to be a big help. You know what's so funny? <laughs> is it's three things I know that Coach Johnson did in the league caught on. And, Kenny, you can verify this. There was no offseason 24-7, <laughs> no, 365, 365 days a year training mm. until Coach Johnson came. It was no major rotation with defensive lines until yes. Coach Johnson came. Mm. Right. And what I'm talking about major. I'm not talking about you trying to work a young guy in. Yeah. I'm talking about you got line change. Yeah. You had four tackles, you had four defensive ends, and they rotated. Yeah. Yes. He was the first one to not take his safeties off the right. field. And I, I understand the safety in the box. Yeah. But I'm yeah. talking about not only is that safety had to have res run responsibilities, he had to play the slot receiver. Yeah. Kenny, and him, Kenny and Darren Wilson had to know these slot receivers' uh, yeah. responsibilities, and what well, other guys were changing guys out. Got you. And and, and, and the other teams, well, we can show you on film. No, brother, we no. the Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> Jimmy Johnson specifically, okay. made yes. them guys do that. Okay, K Kenny, name <laughs> one safety in this league. You know what? Let's go. Let's go ahead and do it like this. Then, yeah, let's okay, go. Yeah. so Kenny, we're gonna go ahead and hit our hit our say it with your chest segment. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and okay. say it with your chest. You, yeah. got, you know, we normally get some push ups in yeah. or something like that before yeah. you do this. But this is our yeah. say it with your chest segment. Okay, for those out there listening, let me tell you something. I want to ask Mr. Kenny Gant. I want Kenny Gant to tell us who is the best safety in the NFL right now. Right now, say it with I your like, chest. I like I like Poirier. Okay, who that? Who that? Uh, poor you up in Buffalo. Oh, he nice? Nice. Yes. Wow. Nice. Tell the people why, though. Can you say it with your chest? Tell the people why he's the best in the league. Because he's smart. He's um, he, he don't make a lot of mistakes. He don't miss a lot of tackles. And you know, when, <laughs> speaking of 126 yards, when, when I'm going to tell you how much I love him because um, uh, what's the quarterback that got benched the other night with the Patriots? Yeah, uh, he, Matt Jones. <laughs> Mac Jones threw two passes in that game and they beat him. <laughs> he beat Buffalo. He was hot. Yeah. Because he didn't know how that happened because they they pride themselves on defense. And I yep. and I love the walk got out from the press conference and everything. You know, I don't condone it. But he he was pissed and he just said he just vowed to never know. And I liked that passion yeah. because he he come down and put that hat on you and he can cover as well. Wow. I like it. I like it. Wow. Okay. All right. 
I like that. Jordan, yeah, Jordan Poirier over there in Buffalo. You know, nice. he, he has a, he's nice. And he has yeah. a heck of a coach out there in, in, uh, in Frazier. Frazier's doing a heck of a job with that defense. He's been doing so for the last few years. So I like that say it with your chest right there. I like that, Mr. Gant. Wow. Nada, you got to say it with your chest today? Yeah, I do. What you got? What you got? The Cowboys saw a problem with their defense. Ooh. And it was a run problem. They had leakage. Oh, you know, yeah. now they now they went out and got some some uh some kale peck take. They gonna stop it up. They got they gonna get constipated. You hear me? You hear me? I'm saying this with my chest. Cowboys yeah. will start giving up 90 or less yards a game with Jonathan oh. Hankin. Once he get in there and gets get this thing solidified, yes, sir. It's gonna be constipation all over the Const- place. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Chess right there. That's coming straight from the chest. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, let me see. What's my say with the chest? I got one for you, Nate, dog. Okay. okay. Mm. Uh, let me get my chest swelled up a little bit on this okay. one. Okay. Dak Prescott is not a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. Wow. Did you really believe in that? I'm saying it with my chest, Nate. And, and do you – what – what what, what – what, what, what do you have to back this up? I mean, what, what do you – the Let lack me, of I, I, what? I got something for you. Okay. okay. All right, Kenny. Yes. I want you to imagine, okay? I have imagination. I'm sure you do it too, right? As a right. safety, you always imagine that the ball is going to come your way, right? When it happens, yeah. it happens. If you didn't see who was playing quarterback last week, would you have oh. been able to tell if it was Dak or Cooper Rush? Oh. Not, on, not in the first half, I wouldn't have. Nate, I'm talking about the whole game. Yes, yes. You would have known. You would have said, "Nah, that ain't Cooper Rush no more. That's that." Yeah, that's what you would have said. That's what I was saying. Because no, you, you got to, you got to get a second Kenny, half. Kenny, come stop this, man. Come stop. You got to get a second half some credibility. Come stop this, man, Kenny. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> it's gonna be rusty, but uh, of course, um, similarities in the first half, but the second half was totally different. Yeah, I, yeah, but why was the second half different though? Because the coach reined him in. Who did? Coach, uh, uh, Coach Freaky Mike, M- your dog on right. Yeah, Freaky Mike, Mike. M- Mike McCarthy reined him in. He dropped his dog on. He dropped his. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm gonna say. Okay. And he, he gave Kellen Moore an opportunity to go out there on that fourth down. And yeah. what he he didn't like what Kellen Moore put out there. What did he do? Oh, he called timeout. Called timeout. Oh, what I, was, he I was so happy Woo, to see that for the first time I mean, that I've seen in five or six years. What? Tw- Kellen Moore, not yeah. Kellen Moore. Mike McCarthy, you drop, you dropped some. I, you dropped them, and I and I'm glad you dropped them. <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me something. tell you something. Yeah, he I love to see him. it. I love to see. It. That was he my dropped. first time. Would you agree with that, Ken? Is that the first time that you've seen Coach McCarthy drop a pair? He he dropped them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know when he did it, we looked at each other. Yeah, like, we sure did. Like okay, I'm like thank you. That was a huge moment yeah. because Absolutely. wouldn't you, Kenny? Wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, Zeus, we call him Zeus too because he, he's so <laughs> built so well, Kenny. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't you say, you know what? Uh uh-uh. uh. 3 3. Okay, I, I'll put my defense versus your Absolutely. offense. Absolutely. Yeah. Why well, put myself in a situation where my yes, back's against the wall? I, I agree. Have to be down. Yep. Anytime. Any and that's time. why when they fumbled that ball on that goal line, we kind of knew the game was over. Yep. Because Detroit yep. turned into Detroit. Yeah, they did. Right. And now we had them. Yeah. But let me ask you this right here. What you got, Nick? The kid that plays quarterback for Detroit. Yeah. I, I like golf? His, I like him, man. Why, you like why golf? can't he be successful? Why, what is golf what always is golfs it? it up, man? <laughs> he golf golfs it up. And I think that in that inconsistency, or right. on the other flip on the flip side, that consistency of the inconsistency, right. that's that leaves a lot of people that boy with got a some bad taste talent, in your mouth. Man. Huh? That boy oh. got some arm talent out of this one. He can throw. Wow. If he has time, he could throw. Yes. But the thing is, nobody has time against the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. So as long as you can get a team out of their running game, mm-hmm. Dallas yep. is going to win. Mm. But yeah. if there's a team that's determined to run the ball. And keep it within three points. It's it's a wrap. Yeah. Yeah. That's a wrap. Hankins, come on, baby. Yep. All right. So, y'all, hey, you guys know that we, y'all see our guy Kenny Gantz on the show. Thank you for, for hopping on the show. Big Nate Dar reeled yeah. in, reeled in another one. Yeah. Reeled this, in another this one. That's my man. Like I say, he'll be in it. In a, in a month, maybe a month and a half at most, because Kenny Gant got a story, I think, that, you know, Isaiah going to help present. It's yeah. that sweet. Yes. Yeah. So one thing we want to make sure that we we address is some some real-world things that are going on uh, in people's lives. And we want to make sure that we address things that are not only fun, football, that kind of stuff, yes. you know, life experiences that Nate and I have had, but also things that, you know, where people can have impact. And one of the areas that 
has impacted Kenny Gant's life tremendously has been the effect of domestic abuse on women yes. in particular. Okay, domestic abuse in general obviously is something that none of us condone, but particularly on women, um, they're usually put in a bad situation. And Kenny Gant, I would love for you to to share um, your your story on why that is so. Uh, prevalent in your life? Why is it something that you're so passionate about? And what are you doing now to to have an impact in that particular community? Okay, well, come on, thank you um, for that. Um, just coming out of Albany State, um, HBCU, drafted, um, just living life um, of, of humility. Um, just just want to do right by my family. And um, <clears throat> so my family was happy. Everybody's looking forward to coming up to see first make sure I made the team then they come to my first <laughs> game and, uh, and and check me out and we so we we talked about HBCUs last week yeah. we should have had you on last week too yeah okay yeah and we uh we had um <clears throat> discussed with my sister uh, she's actually my sister-in-law but she was raised up in my house and uh and so we call them our sisters and um and um she uh, just before the, the opening game, I made the team. I got a chance to talk to her until next week when I get my first check. Um, I make sure I furnish it, take all that old furniture out your house, and I'm gonna buy you new furniture. And the first week of my first paycheck, um, she was gone. She was shot four times by a little um, a guy. <clears throat> I used to call him a little punk, but um, you know I know it's. Um, stuff is crazy now. Uh, you can't. You got to be politically nah, correct. Nah, you ain't got to be politically correct on here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he was. He was. Um, just came home and just shot her, man. And uh, the blessing in it all. If there's any blessing, man, he didn't shoot my five year old nephew that was standing right beside her while she was hanging clothes. Um, so <clears throat> now I commit my life. <clears throat> Um, to to the purpose of um, I just can't stand domestic violence uh, and trust me and I'm not just being biased about it I've I've been to some centers I, where two men was in there uh, being affected by domestic violence so but it's mostly women so but I I, I just I don't like it because some men just won't want to fight back and they've been hit with pots and pans and yep. everything yep. won't hit the woman back but um <clears throat> Um, so the shark, um, 29, um, charities, um, um, hits this head on and try to get women out of harm's way. I got some hotels that I partner with, um, which I can't share on here. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, they, they can go and I can, my charity pays for the hotels somewhere to stay to get them out of the way. Um, and that's what I, I raise money for to get them in shelters, get them in homes, um, I'm down in Tampa before I came back here, I, I, I blessed three ladies with, um, three single ladies with, um, vehicles. Nice. Um, so I, I just, the money that I receive, I always put it back into what I, into Cynthia's name, you know, so Absolutely. it's going to help somebody. And, um, and I just appreciate this opportunity to be able to tell the story and what I do. Well, thank you very much for, for, for sharing that, Kenny. But what, if you can, give us the website. Do you guys have the website where people can find you and, and have opportunity to make donations? Yeah, Shark 29 Charities. Shark 29 Charities. Shark 29 Charities, man. And you know, yeah. and, 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 I'm, and I'm telling you, you know, uh, young men that's out of control. I was out of control in life like that once. And, and you, you don't know the people in the lives that you hurt. Yeah. Your yeah. children. Their parents, your parents, yeah. uh, the re all relatives. Yeah. Yes, you know their friends. I mean, so many lives are affected, and, yes. and it's never. Life is so precious; it's mm -hmm. never positive. Mm -hmm. It's never positive, never. and uh, and you can't. And as a man, like I tell you, you can't say, "Well, nah, women are not designed." Our men. Yep. are not designed to be abused in that form or fashion. Right. You know, so you have to be cognizant of what you're doing. And if you're in that situation, leave. Yes. It's so hard. Yeah. Yes. Because nine times out of ten, you feel trapped that, you know, you're trying to help a person. Correct. But, you know, and, and me and Kenny was talking about it the other day. We did a little something together. And, it, 
And I like <clears> the <throat> first thing is I tell people, leave. They're like, well, I, no, leave. Leave. There's, yes. And there's and there's so many, and I'm sure Kenny, you can probably speak to this more so than yeah. even Nate and myself, but there's so many different variations of domestic abuse. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know. I assume everybody doesn't understand that because the domestic abuse that we typically hear is somebody got arrested because they got physical. Right, right. Somebody got, or somebody got arrested because they threatened to harm somebody. Right. Um, but the emotional side of it, ooh, yes, sometimes has a greater effect than the physical. Yes, yes. Because yeah. of, because the physical heals. Would you would you agree with that, Kenny? Uh, absolutely, one hundred percent. That's one of the things that. Um, I, my, my wife makes t-shirts and I, I make tea. And one of the shirts I, I had her to make for me is that I was anointed to love the unlovable. Mm. And so that's one of my models for the shark 29 charities. I love the unlovable. And what happens, <clears throat> I've had more women, um, that they are beat down by words. They, I'm talking about just flat yeah. beat up self-esteem is gone. They don't want to date anybody. I'm seeing beautiful women don't think they are beautiful no more. And they, they stand it in my face. I'm like, you're a beautiful woman. They don't even want to hear it. Wow. And it's it's like, what, baby, what you been through? It's like, mm. then they begin to cry. It, 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 that's, and it just takes me a whole different yep. way. And I, I try to hold my emotions in, but sure. I already know. I, I, could t- I could sit there and talk to somebody for two minutes, and I know they've been abused. Wow. You know? There, and the thing that bothers, I am, I, I hate it too. I, yeah, I yeah. hate it. It's one of the reasons why I could never work. I don't believe that I could work in the, um, in the field yeah. police or right, you know, right, agency, right. any kind of agency of that, of that matter, because I think I would be just too emotionally involved. Right. People touching children bothers me. People right. disrespecting women oh, bothers right. me. Right. Um, I have, I have done a lot of work in terms of supporting human trafficking right. uh, foundations, people that are doing some of the work that you're doing, Kenny, getting these women off the street, getting them in safe houses. Um, I'm on the board uh, of directors for wow. the Union Gospel Mission, and we we do the same thing in terms of helping women get off the street and get out of these situations that a lot of them are victims of domestic abuse. But the thing that bothers me is that it's going to be it's hard fetched for you to, as an adult to find anybody that you interact with that doesn't know somebody that's been a right. victim of domestic abuse. That's right. And you know, you just you just mentioned it in terms of guys too. Yeah. One of one of yeah. my one of my best friends has his 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 ex wife freaking used to abuse him. Yeah. And yeah. it was one of those things where you know, as we were kind of yeah. like as young high school you know students, you're kind of laughing it off like, man, she's crazy, she's tripping. But like, no, it was domestic abuse. Right. The physical yes. things that the physical things that she would do, right. you know, the the tormenting that she would do, the the verbal abuse and the degrading. So it can it goes both ways. Right. Um, you talked about removing yourself out of situations, yes. Nate. I would never put my hands on a woman. I used, right. to, have a, I used to have a three strike rule, right. and my mom helped me help me establish this three strike rule. Right. You know, a woman hits you, like walk away. She hit you a second time, walk away. Third time, remove her from the situation and you get yourself up out of there, right? right? But there is one instance, one in my entire life, where I even had the urge to put my hands on a woman. Right, right. Only one time in my entire right. life. And that was what I was engaged one time. I was and prior, not, not right. to my, my current wife, but I was engaged prior to, prior to her. And this young lady um, got yeah. an emotional rise out of me, right, right. Kenny? And she got yeah. me to the point where I was, I, I redlined. Right, it right. takes a long. It takes a lot to get me yeah, out of control, but once I get there, right, yeah. it's not good. Right, right? it's yeah. not good. Right, so I almost like, there's the the fights that I have had, Nate. I blacked out. Right, so right. I didn't. I don't like allow myself to get to that point. And she got me to that point, and I try to remove myself mm. from my own house. And I was walking out the house, and she stood in front of the door. Right, and she was like, "I'm not gonna let you go," and I could feel myself getting out of control. Right, wow. and I just I I and thank thank goodness I I have God on my side because He yeah. gave me the peace of mind to say, I literally these are the words came out of my mouth. I said, you might want to move because it's not like I can't move you. Right, and that alone, she moved out the way, and I just removed myself from the situation until I got to a position where I can calm down, clear my mind, and right. think. But I had God and 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 wow. chance or whatever else you want to put on your side whatever you want to whatever you believe in but I believe in God he took me out of that situation but there's so many people male and female that got into that point and they did not make that decision wow correct 
Mm. Boy, I, I tell you, it's rough, it, man. It's a it's a big challenge, and um, <clears throat> and I thank you for sharing that story, uh, stand back, um, because um, that's that's what I, man. I get in my truck quick, man. Yeah. You know. <laughs> wow. Wife, wow. you know, after eighteen years, you know, you're married. So this is my second marriage, but after eighteen years, you know, everything ain't come home and honky door. Mm-hmm. Shoot, it's, it ain't nothing to get in my truck. My truck stay on full, so I can get on there. <laughs> you know, I bet you don't drive more than Nate do. <laughs> no, nah, man. I, I, you know, and I, I tell people because I wasn't these controlling. I, I, I didn't have no control. Got you. And I, and, and, and uh, I knew God, but it's, yeah. it, if you don't surrender yourself to Him, you don't you really go. know Him. There you go. And so when I surrendered myself to God and understood, and I look back and I say, Wow. So when I hear we have a chance, you know, uh, say I'm sorry, but you cannot say it enough. Yeah. You, I, I tell people like right here. A lot of times, just you, you know, when you go through that with a young lady or a young man, it's almost impossible to face them sometimes. Gotcha. Yeah. Be- because <laughs> you can't say I'm sorry enough, you, you know, and uh, and you can't. And I tell people, you, it ain't like you can go around and be animated. Ah, right. you know, it ain't like you can, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you can go out and try to just grab them and hug them or, because the, the, the memories ain't, ain't, bro, that's a scar for life. Yeah. And I tell people, you, you better understand what you, yeah. are try, what you are doing to somebody and their family and their friends when you call yourself going to be a bully, a coward. Yeah. When you call yourself going to be a coward because you cow- ain't no man, you ain't no woman, you just a coward. That can't deal mentally with the yeah. situation. Kenny, what, what would you say to any male or female that is finding themselves in a situation that is hard for them to remove themselves out of, but they are at risk or they have already sustained domestic abuse? What, what advice would you give them? Uh, the best advice I can give them, um, please get out. That's, that's the first thing. Just get out. There's some agencies out here ready to to help out. I'm one of them, and 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 I it, if any women or men listening uh, right now, I did this in a, in a church setting um, before, um, and the guy was up preaching and we doing certain things, and uh, so it was a women's conference. So, but they let the men in. You know, when women fall out, we have to catch them and stuff. Right. <laughs> we was, you know. It, you can feel the hurt in there. Some of the women that was hurting, and you know, you 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 get the mic and you just say stuff. You know, God prompts you to say stuff, and I I apologize to the women in that room who have been abused. Right. I'm standing in the need of that guy or whoever put their hands on you. Yeah. I want to apologize to you, and I'm sorry. You 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 know how many women broke down. That's powerful, man. Yeah. It, it was it's, it's like mm. it, then now I'm crying because it, it was just it was hurting Heavy, the room yeah. feel it and um it's it's yeah. and sometimes now that's what I use as a as a closing when I go speak to uh, some of these shelters uh, that's that's what I close with I just tell them like, and I, let me stand instead because if the coward don't want to come back and apologize mm. I'm just think of me. I'm apologize. Right. Yeah. To that's, you. That's good, man. I, we are sorry. That's good. And mm. they some of them get free and some of them, you know, they still deal with it, but some of them get free. And as you you're not gonna help everybody, but man, I I try to help as many as I can. Man, that's that's powerful stuff right powerful, there, Kenny. Powerful. Man. Even though uh, those uh, that are the abusers, I want to encourage you to also seek help, seek counseling. Yeah. Um, because you may have hurt somebody in the past. You can, you can try to, you know, try to rectify that as much as you possibly can, but you can prevent yourself from hurting others going forward. So yes, like they, I know yes, we're speaking towards those that have been abused, but those yeah. are the abusers that are out yeah. there as well. If you recognize that you have a problem and you don't like it, number one, I'm going to sit up here and tell you to, to, to seek a relationship with God. Uh, yeah. and number two, seek help. Yeah. Yes. It, it is people out there willing to help you. It's people out there where, you know, I have my pastor Foley walk up to me and, and, and brought up a situation. And he kind of looked at me because I'm telling him who I am. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. said, man, 
have you removed the young lady from the situation? Have you impressed upon her? And now we can talk to this young man. Yeah. I mean, and so uh, and, it, and the young lady removed herself or went back, and but she brought the dude back. So mm-hmm. he's willing to, to uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. try to accept help and work <coughs> out. But like I told her, it, it, I, I, yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> I hear yeah. you. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. man, Kenny, thank you so thank much, you, man. Kenny. Again, I want to remind everybody to go visit shark29charities.org. Uh, you guys can get some more information about the work that Kenny is doing. You guys can make some donations, be a part of uh, be a part of his golf tournaments and things of that nature that are, that are going forward. So you guys, please go support um, not only uh, somebody who's doing amazing work, but go out there and support Nate Dawes' teammate from Dallas yeah. Cowboys Nation. Um, he's doing some amazing work, and a lot of times people don't hear about that. They hear about the rings. They right. hear about the, the stardom, but they don't right. hear about the, the driving force behind the passionate work they're doing, man. So thank you so much for coming thank on, Kenny. Stand back. Thank you, Nate, man. I love you guys, man. Yeah, man. I look forward to coming in and just hang out with you because I know you two together. I've seen <laughs> that. <family. laughs> yeah, we get it in, man. Yep. Thank you, Kenny. We'll get it in, I think. All right, man. We'll have you in the studio soon, man. And for those that are tuning in, thank you all for tuning in for another episode of Let Me Let Tell me You, tell you something. something. We'll be back next week. It's a bye week for the Cowboys, but we got some more fire for you guys, man. We'll see you all next time.